What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. We're starting off a new little series. Don't say the car's topless Tuesdays. The real ones know what I'm talking about. We're exposing everything. We're exposing everybody. Nobody's safe. By that, I mean we're exposing one rookie every Tuesday that's going far, far, far too low in rookie drafts. All right, there's going to be a little bit of a deeper dive on, on dynasty guys, on rookies, helping you prep for your rookie drafts coming up in a couple months, but it's good to get a head start. It's good to start knowing these names so that you know the tier breaks, you know the value picks, you know who you should be targeting late first, second, third, fourth round, things like that, so you're not wasting picks in your rookie drafts, okay? You can call these guys sleepers. You can call them value picks. You can call them whatever you want. Just don't say the car's topless. We say the titties is out. So Y'all know what to do. Tuck your shirts in. Stop yelling. And let's eat. If y'all enjoy the video, at any point, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. It's, it's the hand that looks like this, not the one that looks like this. Now, I know the, the title of the video was this year's Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson, pretty good year. Is it possible to follow up the next year with a player as productive? Probably not, but we could find some damn similarities. A lot of y'all are thinking, this year's Justin Jefferson. That's easy. How about the dude that outproduced Justin Jefferson while playing on the same field at the same time on the same team as Justin Jefferson? Jamar Chase. Nope. Let's think about what Justin Jefferson does well. Okay, he does everything well. Literally everything really, really, really well on a football field. Does he do anything elite? That's debatable. I would probably lean towards no, but he does everything at like an 8.7 to an 8.8 .8 out of 10. There's no glaring holes in his game. So I'm looking for a guy that's not going to blow you away with, with any one thing, right? Those are the guys that typically get the most buzz and the most hype and talk about the most upside. You know, a guy who goes for 2,000 yards in his last season in college, a guy who's going to run a 4.28 or a 4.31 in the 40-yard dash, a guy who can out-jump a fucking kangaroo. Those are the guys who are going to pop on tape. They're going to look real good in highlights, but they wind up being the most inconsistent players. Those things are more buzzy than they are practical. We want someone who maybe is not getting the name recognition he deserves out the gate because of his lack of flashiness, but whose profile is unblemished. With that intro being said, we are going to look no further than Rashad Ragad Bateman out of the University of Minnesota. So let's get all the buzzwords out of the way. Bateman has a blend of savvy route running, elite hands, he's got yak ability, complex releases, and a very high contested catch win rate. You ain't catching the damn ball if it's within a five-yard radius of this man. Now, Bateman, he's a little bit thicker than Justin Jefferson was coming into the league. 6'2", 210. So he's got that real prototypical build that you want to see on the outside as like an alpha receiver. Justin Jefferson probably lacks, you know, 10 or so pounds. He looks a little bit more lean in the frame. So when we talk about a guy like Rashad Bateman, you'll see a lot of comps to Allen Robinson. And I think the play style is very similar. Really good route runner can go up and get the ball and, and bully dudes if, if need be. But I see a little bit more Justin Jefferson. I see a lot of like Keenan Allen. And Justin Jefferson was compared to Keenan Allen a lot last year as well. And if I think Shaw Bateman looks like Keenan Allen, if so facto, they all look alike. We're doing fucking Spider-Man memes left and right here. So you look at the numbers. He broke out as a true freshman. Okay, true freshman comes into Minnesota, 2018, 51 catches, 704 yards, six touchdowns, which was a large portion of the passing offense in Minnesota, right? When we talk about breakout age, when we talk about college dominator, the percentage of production that that typical wide receiver had, it's not always about raw numbers. Sure, there are tons of wide receivers that have more than 700 receiving yards in a year, but when you look at the overall piece of the pie, what Bateman did in that receiving offense compared to the overall passing production, his breakout age was true freshman, 2018, Minnesota. So you had the breakout, which was followed by the absolute fucking ball out in 2019 60 catches 1219 yards 11 touchdowns so 2020 obviously got a little weird with the COVID protocols and it wasn't going to happen and then he opted out and then he opted in and then he opted out so he ends up playing five games in 2020 ends up with 472 receiving yards 36 catches and two touchdowns but again let's look at the overall piece of the pie here here's a tweet from Jared Smola at Smola DS Rashad Bateman's market share in five games last year 47.4 percent of receptions 45.7% of receiving yards and 50% of the receiving touchdowns. 
he was the entire passing offense on that team as he should be because he's fucking incredible so don't don't let the lack of you know production raw production totals in 2020 deter you from what he was as a player he was that Minnesota passing offense so again you're going back to those younger years we're going to get into the similarities between himself and Justin Jefferson in a sec go back to his younger years again Bateman broke out at 18 years old in 2018 as a true freshman, which is a 94th percentile breakout age. You can see all the stats here on playerprofiler.com. That was while sharing the field with Tampa Bay Bucks now wide receiver Tyler Johnson, who is a baller and his time is coming. Them two together were a, a, a they were, you know, they were the Jamar Chase and the Justin Jefferson of the Big Ten. Them two were a deadly, deadly receiving combo. 6'2", 210, broke out at 18 years old. College target share 30.4%, 87th percentile. College dominator 43.7%. 88th percentile and here's where all the interesting numbers start to come into play per Cody Carpentier's tweet the most catches on throws 10 plus yards down the field in 2019 again we're going to do a lot of these stats based off 2019 because that was the last the final full year we have of Rashad Bateman as well as a lot of these top wide receivers 46 catches of 10 plus yards down the field the guy right behind him Jamar Chase Rashad Bateman led the NCAA in that from Curtis Patrick at C Patrick NFL since 2000 power five underclassmen wide receivers with 50 plus receptions and 20 plus yards per reception so you're catching at least 50 balls and you're averaging over 20 yards per reception in a single season so we're looking at these power five underclassmen wide receivers that have done it you look at 2020 you got Deami brown and then 2019 rashad bateman right there his 2019 season was ridiculous leads the ncaa in 10 plus yard catches is one of just i don't know eight or ten wide receivers since 2000 that put up over 50 receptions averaged 20 plus yards per reception as an underclassman Yami brown Rashad Bateman, Jamar Chase, CeeDee Lamb, Will Fuller, James Washington, Mike Evans, Andre Johnson, Lee Evans, Charles Rogers. You know who tied for the NFL lead in receptions of 20 plus yards in 2020? Justin Jefferson with 23 of them. Ties Travis Kelsey and Calvin Ridley. So as I said earlier, Bateman is the prototypical outside guy. He's not a slot guy, but we weren't really sure what Justin Jefferson was coming into the league either, right? In 2018, he pri- he played primarily outside for LSU and had his breakout year in 2018. And then 2019, he moved inside into the slot full time. And that's where he went nuts and caught about a zillion passes. So while Bateman is not a slot guy, he did run 20% of his routes in the slot in 2019. And among 150 power five conference wide receivers that ran at least 50 snaps. So in order to qualify for that 150 wide receivers in the power five conferences, you had to run at least 50 snaps from the slot. Rashad Bateman's yards per route run 3.03 ranked 14th out of those 150 players better than Justin Jefferson's final year at LSU. This is where them two remind me so much of each other. In that 10 to 20 yard range where Justin Jefferson routinely gets open, whether it's a slant, whether it's an outside cut, whether it's the fake slant to the outside, Justin Jefferson eats up 11, 12, 17 yards at a time, like those chunk plays, like that's the only thing he's allowed to snack on. It's the outside comeback route. It's the 15-yard slant over the middle, waiting for him to break off and develop the play. That is exactly how Rashad Bateman operates as well. They just live in that 15-yard range, and it's 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 usually nothing explosive. It's usually nothing crazy. Back on second and 12. Morgan Faith to him. Morgan Faith has a man. is completely twisted around. Beautiful route. And career catches of just 22 games here at Minnesota. Here's the slam. And when he came in as a freshman, he was only 170 and a few pounds. He's put on about 25 pounds. And that is the, the only difference I would say is Justin Jefferson probably has a little bit more downfield raw you know athletic for that that real real NFL top end speed where he can break away for 80 plus yards on a given play which we saw a ton during his rookie year but I think Bateman probably offers a little bit less explosiveness but both of them are so good at being possession receivers in that 10 to 20 yard range and Bateman he gains separation so easily especially when operating as that slot wide receiver he's crispy on the outside but that slant when he breaks in is almost impossible to cover from this D-backs it's the same thing with Justin Jefferson how quick they are off the line and then going back to the original comp you know the Allen Robinson almost like the Mike Evans ish in the red zone in tight spaces Rashad Bateman is is almost unguardable he's got that like perfect timing go up and get the ball no matter where it is no matter where the D-back is no matter how tall the D-back is like I'm gonna go out there I'm gonna win this 50-50 ball Rashad Bateman offers that same play ability in that sense as like the Allen Robinson type and then you look at where these guys go off the board went off the board Justin Jefferson 22nd pick overall last year first round to the Minnesota Vikings 
I expect that to be pretty much the exact same spot, right? He was the fourth or I think fifth wide receiver off the board. Bateman likely to be the fourth or fifth wide receiver off the board behind Jamar Chase, Devonta Smith, Jalen Waddell. And then there's probably a debate between, you know, the Rondell Moores or Rashad Bateman's probably right in there for the NFL spot. Vikings, 22nd pick, took Justin Jefferson last year. You look at the teams in that range. I think he has a possibility of going as high as New England at 15, although I do think they would probably side with a guy like Jalen Waddell over Rashad Bateman because they need some legit field-stretching speed. But after that, it's all bets are off. I mean, you have Miami at 18 makes sense if they don't go, if either they trade for Deshaun Watson or they take the tackle at number three or they don't take Devontae Smith at number three, whatever the case may be. I think Bateman at 18 makes a lot of sense. I think Washington at 19 makes sense. Chicago at 20, where if Allen Robinson leaves via free agency, you can see Rashad Bateman kind of come in as that one for one exact replacement. You've got Tennessee right after them. If Corey Davis walks, then they would need a second uh, wide receiver there. I would much rather see Rashad Bateman go somewhere where he can actually operate as a wide receiver one he's going to be the two if he goes there with AJ Brown but like god damn that would be a disgusting disgusting uh, wide receiver combo so realistically I think he can go in any of those in that range exactly where Justin Jefferson went with the Minnesota Vikings and then I think maybe like Baltimore Baltimore might be able to I mean they're down at 27 so I highly doubt Rashad Bateman falls that far but maybe they trade up and, and grab their guy to give uh, Lamar Jackson a legit prototype wide receiver one on the outside to throw to in terms of rookie drafts right now he's he's going in that same exact range where Justin Jefferson went where you were able to get him at the one nine 110 if you were lucky sometimes he dropped like the 2122 where all those wide receiver values just get absolutely scooped up because people are so enamored with running backs and they're so enamored with quarterbacks. So in super flex leagues, you're going to see almost four, maybe five quarterbacks go off the board in the first round. You're going to have Trevor Lawrence. You're going to have Justin Fields. You're going to have Zach Wilson. You're going to have Trey Lance, depending on how early those guys go in the NFL draft. There might be some other players too uh, at the quarterback position that go in the first round, which would warrant first round consideration in rookie drafts. Then you're going to have the Travis Etienne. You're going to have the Najee Harris. It's Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith are almost definitely going to get drafted before. Rashad Bateman in rookie drafts and then Jalen Waddell if he gets drafted like there's a good chance that he drops down to the 110 112 2 1 area which is fucking ridiculous for a guy that that is this good and I really believe can be the next Justin Jefferson here I would say my wide receiver rankings so I did the top five rookie running back rankings Thursday of last week I'll link that video in the description if you want to get that breakdown I'm doing the top five wide receiver rookie rankings this Thursday so two days from now so stay tuned for that and basically what I came down to is like I have Chase I have Chase as, as the elite tier one guy like he is he's my wide receiver one I'm not gonna think too hard about that we've just had too much time to try to make hot takes and you're seeing Twitter being like no Jamar Chase not the one anymore Devontae Smith is great I have Bateman in the same exact tier as Demont- Devontae Smith right behind Jamar Chase so I would not blame anyone for taking Devonta Smith or Rashad Bateman as high as the three four pick Right, if it's Najee Harris one, I mean, it's super flex. You're probably getting him. That would probably equate to like the five, six ish pick. But where Bateman's going in the 10, 11, 12 range, I think you could argue him up another four, five, six, seven slots. I think he's probably the the single best value in rookie drafts in the first round right now. These don't say the cars topless Tuesday videos. We'll get a little bit more in depth. Obviously, we'll start working our way down as I watch more film on some of these rookies and get more research done as the weeks go by. We'll get into second, third, fourth round guys. Bateman's obviously a name that most people know at this point, but I don't think he should be considered like a value pick that drops that late. In the same sense that Justin Jefferson was just like there, you know, you don't want him to let him pass, but maybe some people weren't as excited as they should have been. I think Bateman's exactly in that mold. And if you grab him with a late, you know, if you finish in second, third, even first place in your league and you have one of those late picks and you grab Bateman, I think you have a high-end wide receiver too for the considerable future with legitimate Allen Robinson type upside in fantasy. I love Rashad Bateman, man. I really do think he fits into that Keenan Allen, Justin Jefferson type mold. He's a little thicker. Keenan Allen's a pretty big dude as well. And uh, we've seen him operate from the slot. We've seen him be extremely nasty on the outside with his cuts where he can obviously get open on any part of the field. I think that's what we see in Rashad Bateman. So I'm all in on this kid. Move him up your fucking draft boards. Don't say the car's top. Let's say the titties is out and I'm out. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed Let's me know that you want to continue to see these. Drop a comment down below what your thoughts on uh, Rashad Bateman are, some of your favorite value picks and rookie drafts this year. And uh, overall, if you want to continue to see me doing these, I love you. I'm out. <laughs>